Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you Captain Chords Epic, a fantastic uh, VST plugin which you can use to create chords, chord progression, change the rhythms, and much, much more. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say thank you to Mixed and Key to give me the opportunity to review Captain Chords. Okay, let's start. As you can see, I have loaded Captain Chords inside Ableton Live, but of course you can use any other DAW as you prefer. So let's um, move up a little bit the window. And something I want to show you straight away is that you can change the size of the window like so as you like, which is really nice. So compared to other plugins where you actually have fixed percentages of zoom, this one allows you to drag and drop the size of the window, which is nice. Okay, the first thing I suggest that you do when you start using uh, Captain Codes is to select your key and your scale. And you can see on the top left here, and the key is selected as A. Click on A and you can choose up and down a root for your key or a root for your scale, I should say. And let's choose G. Of course, you can move to the next one in um, like so or to the previous one using these arrows. And similar here, you can click on where it says minor and you can choose a different scale, like for example, minor pentatonic. And then you can use the arrow to go to the next one or the arrow to go to the, to the previous one. As you can see, as I was changing scale, also the uh, notes available here on the canvas or piano roll um, were changing um, because this view at the moment is set to show scale view. So it will show only the notes which belong to the scale. But of course, I can change that and I will show you that uh, as we go through. Okay, now we have selected a key and a scale, so G minor. And as you can see here, we have the notes on the scale, which is really great. So if you press here where it says G minor, here on the first degree, it will create a chord. A chord um, which um, is formed by a standard triad. So you have the root G, the third minor, B flat, and then you have the fifth, which is a D. Okay? So if I press here somewhere, you select this chord. If I had more chords, of course, I would select more than one. Indeed, if I press on the plus here, I create another chord, and in this case, it will select the G minor. But I can change that to B flat major. I can press, um, I can click on other. Select the G, C minor, again on the, on the add, and then, for example, select F major. And now I have created a chord progression. Let's click play. As you can see, it goes in a loop, and the reason that it restarts and goes in a loop is because I have this selection here as set to loop playback, so it is active. If I disable that, it will not go in the loop anymore. Now, click here and you select this code, and you can see down here at the bottom, you have these views, which at the moment, um, um, we have the code selected view, but you can change the rhythm and also velocity. So on the codes, you can see this G minor, which is selected, and if I press here, it will audition here as well. You have B flat major, C minor, F major. So that's a nice way to actually audition the different um, chords. You can also change the selection here, like so, but it will not audition the chords. Now, you can also choose variant here of the interval that you have selected. So for example, I can say G7, and it has changed that adding the F here as a seventh. I can press on the Updo button to remove the, what I've just done. Indeed, change it from a G minor to a G7. Okay, so the other, other things you can do here, you can change the inversion. You can go up, for example. In this case, it moved the G here up an octave, as you can see there. So the chord starts from the second interval, the B flat. I can do that again, and it will start from D. And of course, I can go in inversion down and down again to go back to the default one. Okay, so that is nice and simple. Now, select a chord again. I can click up here to go up to the octave. Down an octave. I can add complexity. In this case, at the first time, it adds the root an octave below. I can keep adding the complexity. It will add the second, sorry, the third, which is a B flat, or the second note of the chord. And you can keep going like that. Of course, you can reduce complexity. 
and then you go back to the original code. You can also change the time here, length, like so, for all the codes, which is really nice. It's a nice shortcut. This button here allows you to duplicate all the code progression, like so, which is really nice. Again, click undo if you don't want that. Other things you can do, you can click on a note, click hold and drop. Double click to remove it. Double click to add one. And then you can go to the edge of that note and change the duration as well. Again, click and do it to go back to the default one. You can click and hold and then drag and you can select different codes. And you, if you select everything, for example, you can then right click and you have selection to crop notes to the selection or delete all the notes and start again. As you can see, the um, last selection is still on. Just click somewhere to remove it. This brings me also to the opportunity to show you what you can do with this button custom. So if you don't know what to do, just click add again and then go to custom and you can say, well, I would like to have a C minor and I cannot find it on the selection, type C minor, then set the code. And you have a C minor that, okay, there, okay? So and here in the code view, again, you can see that C minor and you have other option here as well. Like for example, the X, which will uh, um, remove, as you can see, it will remove that particular code. And then you can start uh, again. Clicking on that, and then you can go ahead like so. Okay, so let's select them all of them again. Right click, delete all the notes, and we have an empty canvas. Okay, here you have option to save the preset that you just created to render the audio of the code progression, which is really nice. You can export it as an audio file, and also you can export the media, so you can drag and drop it into your DAW, which is really, really nice. Now, let's go here where it says code progression. Let's click on it. You see it enabled this edit button. You have banks and progression here. Let's select as a banks, for example, um, I don't know, rock. And then here, let's select um, rock classic. And you can see it has now, let's close this window, um, created um, a cold progression based on Bank Rock and Progression Rock Classic. Let's listen. And it's really nice and because you can have a lot of other selection uh, like so, like this one, which is really nice. You can refresh it as well, like so. You can... Uh, change it which is really nice let's click play okay and let's go back here and um, let's change that again so you can change based on the progression that you have selected let's go to rock traditional one there you go you can change the um different uh, um uh, rhythm as well, right? Which is really nice and uh, position on the chords as well. Now let's uh, um, go and actually here where it says rhythm. So let's click on that again in enable the edit buttons here. You have categories which are popular, general, and favorite, and then you have rhythm. You can uh, uh, choose one, which at the moment is on chord and change. You can go to the next one like so, and it will change uh, um, the rhythm. In this case, it says on every bit, so we place the chords on every bit. You can set it to favorite and generate one random. And then, of course, you can still change uh, the timing there as well, which is really, really nice. Of course, these code progression will change your uh, scale. As you can see, is moved from uh, minor to major. If you go now to the rhythm view, you can see that it says custom here, right? So, but let me show you something. So let's select these again, and let's delete the selected note, like so. Let's go for a chord progression. And um, this one, which is very nice, it says here, on chord change for the rhythm. Let's click here, edit. And now let's say we go right at the top and we say every half note. And here it says every half note, which is really nice, right? So now let's close this. Let's click undo to have the default one. Now on rhythm here, if you right click, you can split the style. You can click here. 
and it will split this and you have for this part, for this two code, this rhythm and for this part, this rhythm. So you can then click here and further split it again if you need so. But the beauty of this is, the beauty of this is that then you can go back here and say, well, here I'm going to have every half note and it says every half note and here I'm going to have every quarter note like so and you can see I have changed the rhythms and of course you can also do that manually which is really nice Okay, so I thought that was uh, actually quite nice to see. I will come back to Captain Play because I want to show you how you can create your own rhythm just playing. You can import MIDI, you can load the preset which you previously saved. Here you have a selection for audio. This is where you select sound presets, uh, which is really nice. You can search them as well. You can go by genre, etc. And then when you finish, you click apply. And you can click on sound design, you can add the reverb, delay and filter as you need, you can set the volume and then you can enable or not um, Captain Code to play music as a plugin. And I will show you that in another tutorials. If you don't like to use the internal instrument, you can go to plugins and then you can click here and then you can select a plugin, like for example, pigments from Arturia, click OK. And then you wait a bit and it will load pigment. And now when you click play, it will use the uh, preset from uh, pigments in this case from Arturia. Now you can look back on audio here and you go back to the default uh, using the piano. Okay, and then here you have a VST output as well, which again, I will show you that in another tutorial, but it allows you to, uh, for example, uh, output in MIDI that uh, from the code progression that you have created. So again, really, really nice and really straightforward. So down here we have seen um, um, the different chords which you can select. You can delete the chord, you can split it as well, and then you can also lock it and unlock it if you wish to do so. And then you have the rhythm, we already have seen that, and you can split or delete the rhythm, and then you have option to change velocity as well. Really nice indeed. Now. Let's uh, uh, select everything here. Let's right click and delete the selected notes. Let's go to major, let's move these to minor. Now let's uh, click G minor, go to the next chord. Okay, so we have a chord progression, nice and simple. Now let's go where it says scale view and let's select, select fit to view. You can see it changed slightly to fit it better uh, on the screen. Let's select the uh, uh, scale view. We'll show you only the notes uh, on the scale. Let's select folded view. It will show you only the notes which uh, are used, which is really nice. Let's put it back to scale view. Here you can change the snap, um, which is really useful as you move notes uh, within the screen. It will snap against the grid based on the selection that you have set. Yeah, you can zoom in, zoom out horizontally and vertically as well, which is really nice. Up here, you have a tab. This tab says verse. You can duplicate it. Click on duplicate to create another one, which is called verse two, which is identical to verse to the first one, which is verse. You can also go here, click again. You can rename it or you can delete it. Okay. And it will ask you if you want to delete that. You can click on the plus and it will allow you to create a new tab or duplicate the current tab. If you create a new tab, you're going to be asked to give it a name. Like in this case, create, test, and then you click create. You create a new tab. And this is nice because you can organize as well a uh, code progression based on the composition that you have. Um, you have sync option, which allows you to sync where... Uh, to sync the chord starting progression against the transport control of, uh, in this case, Ableton Live. I will show you that in another tutorial. Uh, Undo, Redo, which I have shown you, how to guide, which you find very nice links there. And then you have settings here where you can find settings to use the MIDI keyboard input to detect the chords, which is nice, and it does that. Use the MIDI input to play. While in the play dub, I will show you, uh, tab, sorry. I will show you that uh, in another tutorial including MIDI in from the door while the in the play tab. Again, I will come back to those. Play audio when closed. 
which will continue to play audio when the, the plugin is closed itself. And checking for updates, feedback, um, don't click on the authorized, the license, and this option here to break the rhythm, the rhythm on call to change. Uh, it does what it says, um, but I will show you that in another tutorial as we progress through this series of tutorial. Okay, I'm going to stop here and uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short introduction. And as always, see you next time. Bye.